Ruben Amarim, the name on everyone's lips from Man United fans to Sky Sports to some man um, to the footballing world. Um, Ruben Amarim, the current manager at Sporting in Portugal, has been heavily linked to the Man United job, so much so that we even know the amount of money that will have to be paid to get him out of a current, of a current contract. Now, is this something that's going to happen quickly? By the looks of what we're seeing, it's something that Enios want to do very, very quickly. And this is something that I would actually really commend them on uh, as I get into this video on Ruben Amarim. But before we get into it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy the content, if you're new around here, remember to hit that subscribe button. We speak about all things Man United and how it affects us as fans. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Ruben Amarim, who is this man? And why is he coming to Manchester United? He has been, he's 39 years old, so very, very young um, manager, very, very young coach. Done wonders at sporting in his first season. He won the league with them. He's won a few cups with them. Uh, They did extremely well in the Europa League in the past two seasons. Um, What exactly is he bringing to Man United? And firstly, who is this man? Now, I'll start at the beginning. We've had two conflicting stories come out from two of probably the best reporters on transfer news in general right now. David Ornstein of The Athletic, Fabrizio Romano of Fabrizio Romano. Uh, David Ornstein has said that Man United are ready and prepared to pay the 10 million and something euros, 8.3, 8.4 million pounds to get Ruben Amarim out of his contract. Now, this is his release clause, obviously which has been put in by him and the club if someone wanted to come. Now, we're also told by David Ornstein that there is an interesting clause in for seven clubs specifically. Man United is on that list. I'm assuming it's clubs like Man City, Liverpool, Barcelona, Bayern Munich. One of those seven top clubs, they have a special price, but everyone else, I think it's close to 17 million euros to get him out of that contract. Now, Man United falls into that category of seven. Therefore, we're, we're paying under £9 million to get him out of that contract. Now, if we're talking about release clauses like David Ornstein is talking about, then that means that we're going to get him very, very soon and we're not going to wait for the summer. In the summer, release clauses don't matter. He can do whatever um, he wants. We don't have to do that. He can leave. Fabrizio Romano is saying something completely different and almost the opposite. He is saying that Ruben Amarim is a manager that Man United is looking at, and he is a top priority for them in the summer. Ruud van Nistelrooy will still take over as interim, as we know, but according to Fabrizio Romano, he is only looking to come in the summer. Now, these are two completely conflicting um, stories, although I've seen a few people speak about it on X, on YouTube, uh, some of the people that I follow. A lot of people are excited about the David Ornstein one, and I can understand why. Man United have never done anything quickly before. Uh, So the fact that we sack a manager on Monday and Tuesday we have release clauses being mentioned is extremely exciting for Man United fans because we never do anything quickly. Uh, When Mourinho left, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took over um, and we were told it was an interim thing because clearly the, the the hierarchy of Man United back then didn't have a contingency plan. We didn't have someone to come in. Ole was easy. We knew the fans would get a bounce. We knew everyone loved him. The players got a bounce. It worked out. I think this with Enios is really, really exciting if what David Ornstein is saying is true. Obviously, if what Romano is saying is true, we're going to be stuck with Ruud van Nusselrooy until next May, Uh, which could have its positives. It could have its negatives. But I'll start with this thing first, and I'll talk about Ruben Amarim, and then I'll speak about Enios and the steps forward and that sort of thing. Ruben Amarim is a manager that we know very well was heavily linked to Liverpool, firstly, because Jurgen Klopp was obviously um, retiring. He was also linked to Manchester City if Pep Guardiola was going to leave. Remember, there was some sort of uncertainty with Pep, and he was heavily linked to both those clubs. Now, both these clubs are title contenders every single year. They're in the Champions League every single year. And if they're looking at a manager like this, it should make you raise at least one hour eyebrow to think that they've seen something in the way that he plays, in the way that he coaches his teams, that he is obviously the real deal. He's young. He can grow with a team. He can grow with a new squad if they're putting a new squad together. 
So I can understand why clubs like Liverpool and Man City are looking at him. Now, the most interesting thing about a new manager coming in, as always, are the players. Who are the players that this man, if he comes in, can utilize and how will we play? He's known for a 3-4-3. What does that mean? A back five. Wing backs and three center backs. An interesting formation that I think Man United have never played. I think we played it a few times under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when you went to a back five. But we've never made it our go-to formation. This could be very, very tricky. And a few players here could be on very, very thin ice and probably will have to leave the club because they either don't fit or they can't play in the style of play that he wants. Now, if you've seen sporting play, I've watched a few highlights of them play. It's high intensity. It's real high intensity football. It's possession-based football. High pressing, win the ball back quickly, which is what Eric Ten Hag wanted to do at Man United. And I've said this numerous times. You can have the best tactics in the world, but if the personnel can't execute it, it doesn't matter. And I think we might have the same issue with Amaram. And I don't mean this negatively. I mean, this could be the, f- the first time we actually see a manager come in and we could actually see a clear out. If he can prove to this club that this is the way I want to play, this is the results I've gotten, I need to get rid of at least eight or nine players to bring in at least seven or eight players to play the kind of football I want to play to put my stamp on this club. That could be a very positive thing. And hopefully Ineos and the club can make this happen. Now, a few players, uh, you'll see Bruno Fernandes is on my, is on the thumbnail of this video. Um, he's already spoken highly of Amaram. I don't know if that is because he's trying to score brownie points because he knows he probably won't fit in a system that plays a double pivot with wing backs. I don't see what really happens in a, in a team like that for a player like Bruno Fernandes. Maybe there is that Portuguese connection. I don't know. He has some very good things to say about Amaram. Like he's a very consistent manager. He's a good manager. He has a good style of play. He's a good man manager. I don't know if this is just to score brownie points because he's kind of feeling a bit fearful. His place was always solidified under Eric Ten Hag because of the way we played. But under new manager, where he's playing a double pivot of Kobi Mainu and Manuel Ugarte. Um, and then that in that 3-4-3 three, three formation uh, could be very, very interesting. But I think with uh, what Bruno is saying, it's positive. There's a lot of positivity around this manager. Um, and it would be interesting to see how it develops. If he comes before the season ends, if he comes after the season ends, it'll be interesting to see how it develops. I know as a fan, I want to see him now. Um, the interim thing, it works. It's nice. It's a nice bounce, but it also comes to an end. And moving on to my next point, if this does happen before the season ends, I think this is a very good indication of how Ineos wants to run Man United. I think the fact that barely 24 hours after we sack a manager, we have huge stories coming out about a new manager already coming in, which means that there is a contingency plan. There is something, there, there was a plan that if things didn't work out with Eric Ten Hag, this was our man. Now, we obviously know two call was on that list. Nagelsmann, there's still a few rumors floating around. Apparently, he would be interested in the job and would be willing to leave Germany to come to Man United and manage Man United. At the moment, the front runner is Ruben Amaram. So I would actually commend Sir Jim Radcliffe and his team um, in the Man United hierarchy for going and doing this quickly if it is done quickly. Um, getting a new manager in, making sure that he has enough time to really look at our team Look at the players he can work with and the players that he can't work with and how to make that work, how to make that happen, how to spin this whole weird thing into a positive. Um, and hopefully we can see a new manager very, very soon. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is obviously extremely exciting. There's so much to, to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. There's obviously a lot of reports coming out. Could we have a new manager this week? Um, Man United are, we're told, willing to pay the amount of money to get him out of a contract. And with all these stories about a release clause getting him out of a contract, it almost screams of the fact that they want him in as soon as possible. And I hope for our sakes <laughs> as fans that we do get him in as soon as possible because that would be extremely exciting. 
Uh, the Ten Hag era is over. Some of us didn't want it to end. A lot of us did want it to end. I didn't want it to end necessarily, but it is over. He's gone. The pictures were there. He got on a plane. He has left. He's not there anymore. Who is our next manager? I'm assuming we will see a good bounce with Ruud van Nistelrooy at the helm. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is Ruben Amarum a good fit? Knowing that Liverpool and Man City wanted him last summer, I would take him at Manchester United. We have to try something new and we have to stick with a manager for longer than three years now. I hope it works out. But you let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.